and let's get back to the falling body. So we got the system defined previously with these parameters here, and let's just assume that there's a little bit of noise on the system, and then the observation noise is quite a bit larger. So a variance of 10,000 means that there's a standard error of 100 meter on the altitude measurement, and we'll start 10,000 meters above ground and with a zero velocity, and we assume that we know exactly where we are. So that means that the observation error is only from the observation error. There's no system noise coming through. So now I'll just give you here's the code to run the system. We just initialize the different matrices that we need and the different parameters. I'll just run 300 time steps for now. It's way too many, but we'll get back to that. Allocate space to store it, and then I will plug in an initial estimate of an initial observation in here, and then I'll do a loop going through the rest of the time step from here on. So I'll take the next x to be a times the previous x, drop equal falls means I keep the dimension structure, plus b times the gravity, plus, and then I do the Cholesky factorization of my covariance matrix, and I multiply that on a vector, column vector, with two random normal, standard normal um, <coughs> numbers. So basically, the Cholesky factorization here is because what we need is to get something that has a covariant matrix, so we need to find something that can work as a multivariate standard deviation, and that we need to do some fa kind of factorization, and that's exactly what we get in doing so. And now the last bit down here is, so a falling body is a good approximation that as long as you're above ground, the gravity is 9.82 around here, but when you hit the ground, it's different. So I just cut off whenever we hit zero vertical height. So these are, you can say, one such simulation, what happens, what is observed, and what we then have to do is to take one step at a time from the initial conditions. We assume that we knew everything exactly, so the common gain will be zero. We have this prediction that we are at 10,000 meters with no covariance, and then we can make a one-step prediction forward from here, where we just subtract half of g here and minus g there, and then we get the observation the system noise in here, and the observation noise increases a little bit. But still, the system is dominated by the observation noise. At the next time step, all of a sudden the common gain is non-zero, it's still small, had the observation, we do the reconstruction where we update our estimate a little bit, so our estimate of the velocity becomes a little bit smaller because we got an observation above what was the, the um, point where we thought we would be, and then we have an updated state uncertainty, but you cannot see it's numerically the same, and then we make another prediction and now you can say the state covariance matrix is slowly growing up to a stationary level. And if we continue one more step, we do the same thing, and we see that, well, we get an update again. They get also get an update of the system noise matrix here, but since this is so much smaller than the observation noise, then the updates are very small. But we do the predictions, and we see that now, again, it's larger, the system noise, uh, the estimate of the system, but it's still much smaller than the noise that is actually on the observation. So if we look at just the first bit, then the velocity increases linearly from zero, and then the position, it's just a parabola falling in time here. So this is how it runs. Now I forgot, in quotes, forgot to add the uncertainty just to save that bit for later. I'll just show you what happens if you start at the wrong place. Then it will, in this case, if you start it at, in this case, 8,000 
500 meters, it will slowly fly. Uh, the estimate will be going upward until you get close to the true value, and then we'll kind of zoom into that. Here I chose some very, very bad parameter values, but I'll show that in an example. So let's go to R, and let's then just run the first bit here. That's doing a simulation just like before. So I won't say much about it, except I'll just show you that it, in this case, it took 49 time steps before it hit the ground. So we will only keep the first 49. So this is the first state, namely the position and the velocity. It does reach up to almost negative 400 meters per second within this time slot here. And if we plot the observations, that is what we should expect to get in a real-time case. So what I will now do is that I'll use a common filler that I have before, and I just need to change my working directory. Here I got my common filter, and then I, in that I have my common function here, and here I will use starting guesses. So I should, I'll just use the first observation as my initial position, and I'll use a sigma one. I will use not zero that I'm not knowing exactly where I'm at, but just a very small sigma, which is the system sigma. Then in my function, what I return is the reconstructed and the predictions, the common gain, the sigma xx, sigma yy, both for reconstruction and predictions, so that I can plot everything afterwards. Let me first just look at the position, the reconstructed position, so after each observation, how does it look like? Maybe I should zoom into this one here, just so that you can see what happens. So, basically, the essential part here is that initially the variance is very, very small and it increases, but very soon it reaches a stable level and then it stays the same all the way down. And we see that as expected, most of the observations are actually inside, so we did quite well. But we also started in a very, very good position. So what happens, and let's just see the reconstructed standard error, how does that evolve over time? So uh, even after just around 10 observations, we are actually at a stationary level, and then the standard error here is 60, whereas the observation standard error is 100. So we see that using this method, we can almost half the uncertainty on the state by using the system information that we have. Now, if we try to start it somewhere else, say at 6,000 meters, and then with a negative velocity initially, and run the same plot as before, you can see what happens here. We start somewhere that is totally wrong, but then very quickly we reconstruct and get up close to where we're supposed to be, but we overshoot because we have a too large velocity upwards. We need to just trim that a little bit. But then at around observation 15 or so, then we are back on track. And at the end of time, our filtering is very good. So the initial state has an influence, but after a period of time, it's gone. So that's why we think it's important how you start, of course, if you're interested in the behavior in the beginning, but in the long run, depending on the parameters, of course, it will converge to something. If we, instead of looking at the reconstruction, look at the predictions, then we can try to take the predictions out and add that. Let me do a different color. Let me make those blue. And let's zoom out a bit. So the one-step predictions here, we make a prediction. I see that they are shifted one lakh maybe. Um, and then we overshoot even more in our prediction, but we see that all the reconstructions bring it back. And soon we are again, as expected, back to 
the track where we want to be. Just to show you what happens, if we, instead of assuming that we know exactly where we are in the beginning, say that we make the uncertainty on sigma 1, so the variance, we inflate that by a factor of 100, and then do the same plot of the reconstruction here, so as the green one as before. Now they will just be green again, but what you will see is that the second one here, we started down here, but the first update brings us very, very far, because we said that we did not really trust where we were. And then already after three or so observations, then we are following the optimal track all the way down. So if you don't know where you are, make sure that you just label that it's unsure, and then you can go on from there. And just showing how is the estimated velocity here. This was the case where we started totally wrong, so we are starting going upwards, but very soon we are down to having some credible values and jumps a little bit up and down. But And the uncertainty and the velocity is fairly large because we only observe the state, but it does have the linear decrease in velocity as is expected. And this was again where we started with large uncertainty, but in general the velocity will have some uncertainty because you don't observe it directly, you just observe it indirectly. So that was about the falling body. To round off here today, we have spent a lot of time discussing the state space model. The important thing is only depending on the previous uh, state, so it has the Markov property. We talk about sampling to go from continuous to discrete time systems. Observability, you need to have full rank of this matrix. And we spend some time on the Kamen filter doing reconstruction and predictions. And if you like, you can do them in the reverse order. You just have to do one before the other and then keep going until the end of the data or until you reach your current time. So that was all for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>